Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, let's see, what should we start out with today? Let's do a reminder from last week. Uh, for those of you who weren't here last week, we're in the second part of the six week series called You Can Heal Your Life. Uh, and what exactly does that mean, You Can Heal Your Life? Well, it means that we have the potential for more happiness, for more goodness, for uh, more peace of mind, for more self-esteem. But there are sometimes things in our lives that have happened that block that. There are things deep down inside us, uh, sad and painful memories, that sometimes we aren't even consciously aware of them, but they are there and they prevent us from rising up and moving in to the greater good that we desire. So last week, we determined that through this six-week series, we're going to develop what we call bottom-line affirmations. And a bottom-line affirmation means that is the foundation upon which you build your life. It means that when all is said and done, that's what you go back to. You can get angry. You can feel bad. You can get your feelings hurt. You can uh, be in conflict with another person. But the bottom line is the affirmation of how you feel, and that is, I am happy to be alive, I'm happy to be me, I'm happy to be here now. No matter what is going on in your life, you can always go back to that. Now the reason we do that is because it builds a foundation, and when I say I am happy to be alive, my mind begins to search out reasons why. It just doesn't accept it as, okay, that's good. It's, well, well, if you're happy to be alive, let's see evidence of that, and it points me to a particular thing in the world that makes me happy, whether it's a person or it's a place or a sunset or whatever. You know, I have an asthmatic condition, and uh, what asthma does is, is in the lungs there's little sacs that hang from veins, and when the asthmatic condition sets in, those sacs kind of fill up like a balloon that's inflated. Well, when all the sacks are filled up, there's no room for air. So I have a little inhaler. I take that inhaler. <clears throat> as I breathe it in twice, immediately the little sacks are reduced back to a size that allows me to breathe. Well, it's the same thing with our negative thoughts. You know, sometimes when we have um, a sour mood or dismal outlook on life, our mind gets filled up with this doom and gloom attitude and there's no room for us to breathe in the light, to breathe in the love, to breathe in the, the beauty and the happiness of being alive. So we have to do something to deflate those negative attitudes and the best thing that we can do is affirm something that's good. In Greek mythology, there is this fellow called Procrustes. And he was kind of a curmudgeon uh, cantankerous cur of a man. He just wasn't satisfied with anything. He was such, um, such a dislikable fellow that nobody wanted to associate with him. He didn't have any friends. People didn't even want to talk to him. So Procrustes would go out on the road and he would kidnap people. He would take them home. He'd strap them down in his bed. Now, for Procrustes, everything was wrong, nothing was ever right, and that included the size of the people. So if somebody didn't fit in the bed perfectly, if they were too tall, he would cut off their legs so they fit. And if they were too short for the bed, he had a, a device that would stretch them out so they would fit in the bed perfectly. And that is the way he wanted life to be, to fit what he thought was right. Well, there's a term called procrustean bed, a procrustean bed. And that refers to those things in life that we, we don't like. They are what they are, but we don't like them. And so we put them in our crustean bed, and we try to shape them and mold them and stretch them and, and, and shorten them to our liking. And usually it isn't the thing in the outer world that we're upset with or that we don't like at all, but rather it's a deeper-seated problem or a wound, so to speak, an emotional wound that, that dampens our outlook on every other aspect of life. Each and every one of us at times, and perhaps right now, have had this idealized vision in our mind of how we think the world should be. And sometimes when our mood gets a little bit gnarly, all those things in the world that don't suit us are brought to our attention 
and we get upset. We either get angry or we put forth an effort to try to change things. Now what I'm saying is this doesn't dismiss uh, goals. It doesn't dismiss motivation to make the world better. But what it does mean is you take that part of the world that is what it is, you take that part of the world that is beyond your control to change and you just you, you leave it be. And you turn your attention to something that you can change for the better or you turn your head to something that, that pleases you. When it comes to you can heal your life, we're talking about finding those places within you that dampen or hamper your potential to experience more of the good that you desire. All of us, to some degree, have experienced healing. You know, 25 years ago, before I even knew what unity was, I was walking by the building one day, and there was a huge sign out front that said, Wednesday evening healing service. Well, I was raised 25 years ago in an age when, when healing services were on TV all the time. You know, every, every Sunday, I would turn on TV and watch Oral Roberts or, or other ministers do healing services. And these were uh, evangelists that had services, and at some point during the service, they would call somebody forth that had a physical malady, and they would heal them. You know, people would come up on crutches that couldn't walk. People would come up who were blind. People would come up who were so weak and so faint they could hardly stand. And whether it's Oral Roberts and one of the other healers, when they came up, he put one hand on the back of their neck, and he put the other hand on top of their head, kind of like he would to a, a lid that's too tight on a jar, and, and he would shake them. And he'd say, Satan, be gone. And with you, take the malady that holds this person imprisoned to ill feeling. And then he'd say, in the name of the Holy Spirit, you are now healed. And the person would throw away their crutches and skip back to their seat. <laughs> or a blind person would pick up the Bible and start reading from it. And the faint and weak would finally feel robust and strong, and they'd walk out with a tremendous amount of power and strength. Well, I was amazed by this. So when I walked by Unity Temple and saw Wednesday evening healing service, that's exactly what I was expecting to find. I didn't come here for any sort of spiritual nourishment. I didn't come here for anything but to be entertained and amused. <laughs> Which might be the case for some of you this morning. I don't know. <clears throat> but when I went to the service, what I did discover was that it wasn't about physical healing at all, but it was about emotional healing. And furthermore, what I discovered that very first night at the healing service was that the minister seemed to be talking directly to me. Because I realized for the first time that there were aspects of me that needed to be healed. I realized that I had a, a, a degree of emotional problems. I realized that I had a degree of hurt and suffering inside of me. I realized that I could heal those things and rise above them and move into a much, much better way of life. See, I didn't know that before. Once again, I was raised in a childhood religion that continually told me that I was a sinner and that suffering was necessary in order to gain salvation. Suffering was necessary because Jesus Christ died for my sins. So I just felt feeling bad about myself. I just thought being caught in a, in a purposeless, meaningless life. I just thought all these hurts and pains that were inside me because of things that happened within the family or things that I had done were just natural. That that's just how life was. And I was to suffer under them. That was the cross I was to bear so that I could gain salvation and be free of them in the end. Well, this evening, I mean, like the curtains being pulled open, all of a sudden, this person convinced me, with total confidence, he convinced me that I didn't have to live that way, that I could heal myself. And that was a glorious discovery. That's basically what kept me coming back from unity, or back to unity. I came back because immediately I recognized that there was a hope in my life. Immediately I recognized that there was some sort of a, a motivation for me to move from where I had been all my life to a place that was much, much better. 
a place that offered a sense of, of ease and a sense of comfortability in my body and in my skin and in my mind. So when we talk about You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay, and the book has sold 30 million copies. She's healed millions and millions of people's lives. It's an incredible uh, process. But what it does is allow us to take deep introspection and discover what is it, if anything, that is holding me back from being happy. What is it, if anything, that is causing me to create conflict or resentment or anger in my relationships? What is it, if anything, that causes me to stand in the face of abuse and disrespect and take it? And that's what this healing process is all about. The bottom line from last week was, I'm happy to be alive, I'm happy to be me, I'm happy to be here now. Repeat that after me. I'm happy to be alive, I'm happy to be me, I'm happy to be here now. No matter what is going on, you can always go back to that at the end of the day because that has to be the truth. If you're not happy being alive and you're not happy being who you are and you're not happy being wherever you are at the present moment, life can be pretty dismal. But that dismality is nothing more than a congregation of thoughts within your mind that you have put your attention onto and that you have grown into your outlook towards life. And we intend to change that. This week, the focus of the lesson is, what do you want out of life? What do you really want out of life? Riches, power, and fame? Happiness, love, pleasure? All of those things are nice, but there is one thing that without, we cannot enjoy any other pleasures in life. One thing stands before everything else, and that is peace of mind. If you have a restless mind over anything, you're never going to be ex uh, fully experience love or happiness or the pleasure of another person's company. Peace of mind is essential. And we are born with that as a natural condition. We are, we are wired, so to speak. We are created. We are designed to feel at peace. We're designed to feel well. This week I had um, something I caught in my garbage disposal. And so I shut it off and I put my hand in there to find out what it was. And as I did, my, my finger ran into the blade and the blade went under my fingernail and cut it. And it hurt. So I washed it off with hot water and I wrapped a uh, paper towel around it and then I put a Band-Aid on it. Woke up the next morning, it's still a little bit tender, but not quite as much. Well, today I can hardly tell that anything happened to it. Why? Because the minute it was injured, my body, with all of its genius, put forth an effort to heal it. It's like a reaction went off and said, oh, oh, there's an injury, heal it. When the cells in our bodies get to the point where they can't, can't do what they're supposed to do, when they get old and they would get tired, deep within the cell comes two other, they call them daughter cells, come two other little daughter cells and they grow and they divide and they become two cells and the outer shell of the original cell is discarded. That's the body's way of maintaining wellness. Well, it's a, it's a miracle in a way, but the same thing is true with the emotional body. No matter what has happened to you in the past, no matter what kind of horrible circumstances you've experienced, the emotional body has that same healing power within you to overcome and rise above and move beyond anything that hampers your peace of mind. And once you have peace of mind, you open the door to all the other pleasures in life. In the sixth chapter of Matthew, Jesus says, <clears throat> be at peace with all things. Now, I don't take many things in the Bible literally, but I do take that literally. Be at peace with, with all things. Well, that's a pretty high command. I mean, sometimes anger is a motivator and get things done. Sometimes criticism improves things. Sometimes sadness leads me into these very dark, rich emotions that actually progress me forward on a soul basis. 
So when Jesus says, be at peace with all things, does that mean that I never have the right to criticize, that I never have the right to complain, that I have to love and see all people perfect? No, it doesn't mean that at all. What he means is be at peace with all things, and that means be at peace with your anger. It's one thing to be angry. It's a natural emotion. But it's a whole other thing to get angry and then turn on yourself and be angry at yourself because you're angry. That's what hurts. And so it is with sadness, being sad because you're sad. Jesus said, be at peace with all things, and that's the normal, natural emotions that are part of our emotional makeup. Be at peace with all things. When I was in Jamaica, oh, three, four years ago, I met a Jamaican down there. His name was Devin. became a very, very good friend of mine. And there were days when Devin would get up and it was obvious that he was not having a good day. He'd be kind of moping around and he would be sad and, and depressed and he wouldn't be talking much. And, you know, me, Mr. Unity, I'd come down there and say, hey, come on, cheer up, let's get going. We got a beautiful day ahead of us. Let's do this, let's do that. But he wouldn't move from this sullen mood. And so I'd work more on him and work more on him. He says, come on, everything is beautiful, it's fun to be alive. He wouldn't change. And finally, after my persistence, he said, I am sad, but that's just the way my spirit travels. And that made such an impact on me. That's the way my spirit travels. Yeah, spirit travels through the depths of sadness. Spirit travels through the light and through the shadows. Spirit travels to the top of the mountain, and it goes down the other side. Our spirits are fully emotional, experiencing this world in all of its grandeur. And to try to amputate the bottom half of the emotional scale, to try to amputate the darker emotions, we miss out on the glory of life because we need that in order to fully appreciate and value the upper side of the emotions. So that's the way my spirit travels. The only thing that we have to do, the only thing that we're being called forth for is to just be at peace with it. Life is what it is. Change what you can for the better. But what you can't change, just let it be. So our bottom line affirmation today for peace of mind is peaceful mind, peaceful heart, peaceful spirit. We say it every Sunday with the opening prayer. Peaceful mind, peaceful heart, peaceful spirit. And there's a certain process to it. Peaceful mind means I am at peace with all the situations and circumstances in my life. I might not like them, but I'm at peace with them. All the situations and circumstances in my life. And there's peaceful heart. The heart is the, the seat of love. Peaceful heart refers to our relationships with other people. Peaceful heart. I'm at peace with all the people in my world. I might be angry at somebody. I might be in conflict with some. Somebody might just really bug me. But I'm, I'm, at, I'm at peace. They have just as much right to be on this earth as I do. They don't have to conform to the model that I put forth. I don't have to put them in my crustean bed and say, you're a little bit too short, you're a little bit too tall. You talk a little bit too loud. You talk a little bit too much. Anybody know somebody that talks too much? <laughs> I, I, I got an offer for you. Buy them a gift certificate to Janet's silent retreat. <clears throat> It doesn't, mean it, it, isn't, it doesn't mean if they like it or not. That would make a difference. But it is eight hours, and you get eight hours of silence. <laughs> we'll, we'll give you a special offer and knock 50% off. But anyway, <clears throat> I, I, um, I digress. It's just being at peace with the whole thing. Does everybody understand that? That's the bottom line. Peaceful mind. I'm at peace with all the situations and circumstances in my life. Peaceful heart. I'm at peace with all the people in my world. And peaceful spirit. <clears throat> spirit as the one that is journeying down this path of life. Spirit that existed before you came into this world. Spirit that exists after you leave this world. It's the spirit I am at peace with. The person I am and the existence I am living 
peaceful mind, peaceful heart, peaceful spirit. So you go about your week, and you find yourself stuck in traffic, you find yourself in a line that is way too long and moving way too slow, or you find some other little piddly diddly thing that's bothering you, you just take a moment, it's the peaceful mind. I'm at peace with all the situations and circumstances in my life. You know, it dawned on me one day when I was at the grocery store, and, and I was in a hurry, and the line was slow, and the person in front of me is one of those that counts out the change and always comes up three pennies short, and so she's going through her purse looking for something else. And I was getting agitated, and I was getting irritated, and I said, my God, how long is this going to last? And suddenly it dawned on me, <clears throat> I said, I'm happy to be here now, and it dawned on me that I was standing in the midst of a store that had 10,000 products all designed to please me. I was standing in a store that was warm and comfortable and clean. And I had money in my pocket to be able to buy what I wanted. And I had a car out front. And I'm getting irritated because I'm spending two minutes more than I want to for someone that's washing their pennies. See, once we stop and really realize what is going on and that we are happy that we're alive, happy we are the person we are, and happy to be here now, and all of a sudden, the reason for all that happiness comes forward. It is everywhere. So to move into meditation this morning, <clears throat> we're going to focus on peaceful mind, peaceful heart, peaceful spirit. And as you say that, as you say peaceful mind, if there's a situation or circumstance that is bothering you, pull that to mind, focus on it for a minute, and just diffuse it with any negative emotion. The same thing with peaceful heart. If you say, I'm at peace with all the people in my world, and all of a sudden an image of someone comes up that has been mean to you, that has hurt you, that disrespects you, just be at peace with that person. You don't have to move in and live with them. You don't have to be their best friend. You don't even have to communicate with them. Just be at peace with their existence on this earth. And when you say, I'm at peace with myself and the existence I'm living, Give thanks that you have this body that was able to get up this morning and come to church, and it functions in so many different ways that allows your life to be very, very pleasurable. Peaceful mind, peaceful heart, peaceful spirit. You will now move into meditation. Okay, we just take a moment to slow things down a bit. And the key to meditation is to truly enjoy it. It is to put any stress aside, any anxiety aside, any pressure aside, and truly be able to say, I am happy to be here now. In the next five to seven minutes, you don't have to do anything you just have to be. So take a deep breath, slowly exhale. Allow your body to become fully relaxed. And take another deep breath. And say to yourself, I'm happy to be here now. I am so happy to be here now.
The greatest desire each and every one of us has is for peace of mind. Our most natural state is that of harmony. And the greatest experience we can have on this earth is love. It all begins with peace of mind. Peace of mind is a door that must be opened in order for us to walk into the existence that truly fulfills the purpose for our being. When angry, be at peace with the anger and it dissipates. When sad, don't struggle with it. Be at peace with the sadness and it moves us to a better place. When feeling guilt or shame or a sense of unworthiness about the self, just be at peace with it. You know, it's all part of the lessons the ego must learn. But in every moment we're moving, and every moment we're growing, and every moment we're rising above and moving forward to the greater good that we desire. So I speak these words, please make them your own and repeat them back to yourself. Peaceful mind. I am at peace with myself. I'm at peace with all the situations and circumstances in my life. I'm at peace with all the people in my world. I'm at peace with the existence I am living. What am I? I am happy to be alive. I am happy to be me. And I am happy to be here now. What do I desire? A peaceful mind a peaceful heart, and a peaceful spirit. And the moment I claim that, it is mine.
on this day. We dedicate ourselves to peace on earth. We accept ourselves without harsh judgment. We embrace and express appreciation for our individuality. We live without fear to meet the events of this day with confidence. We accept others without complaint or criticism. We experience a sense of unity with all people. In harmony with ourselves, our lives, and all others, we live this day with a peaceful mind and a peaceful heart and a peaceful spirit. So it is.